An epidemic of sexual assaults within the military. The growing epidemic of sexual assaults in the ranks, outrage from the commander-in-chief. All objected to legislation to take the decision to prosecute sexual assault away from commanders in the field. A recent rash of sexual assault and sexual harassment within the Department of Defense has created a great consternation and friction for our armed forces. So much so that Congress has become engaged and is threatening to take away the authority of commanders regarding these issues. I want you to know that the Ohio National Guard is not exempt from these issues and we are certainly not immune. We've had our own issues and concerns and this training that you're going to experience today is about getting to the heart and the core of that issue. It's imperative that you pay attention because this sort of behavior not only erodes our efficiency and our effectiveness, but is destructive to the actual fiber and military discipline in our formations. I need you to be involved, engaged, stay tuned. It's important. Our efforts to stop sexual harassment and sexual assault are coming up short. According to a recent memo from the Chief of Staff of the Army, the fight against sexual harassment and sexual assault have become our primary focus. It is up to every one of us, general officer to private, to solve this problem within our ranks. Sexual assault and sexual harassment erodes the trust between soldiers, lowers unit morale, and affects the readiness of our force. There are many recent examples of units descending into indiscipline, substance abuse, rape, and even murder. In all of these examples, it started with a disregard for Army standards and the Army values. It started with NCOs failing to maintain and enforce basic standards and discipline in their units. Often, members of our profession only associate discipline with regulations and the consequences for errors in judgment. However, it is important to understand that our Professional discipline is fundamentally about why and how we practice our profession, not just about punishment for wrongdoing. Leaders should teach and inspire an understanding and an appreciation for both the meaning and the importance of standards and discipline in practicing our profession. Discipline and adherence to standards are hallmarks of Army professionals. The link between the Army values, individual and unit discipline, and sexual harassment and sexual assault is clear. Units that have a culture of standards-based discipline and trust fostered by caring leaders and soldiers that maintain and enforce Army standards and values are far less likely to have sexual assaults, or for that matter, less likely to have vehicle accidents, negligent discharges, AWOLs, APFT failures, and so on. Our soldiers need leaders, not friends. All soldiers want to be led and served beside fellow warriors. It's not always easy to tell a comrade they are wrong or their behavior is unacceptable, but it's our obligation, our duty as American soldiers to correct and not to tolerate any behavior that is contrary to the Army values and our standards. The Non-Commissioned Officer Corps is the backbone of the Army, and it is my expectation, in fact our country's expectation, that we, the NCO Corps, and in fact all soldiers, uphold the standards, discipline, and character of our units. I believe that every unit falls somewhere along a spectrum of discipline. Imagine with me for a moment a spectrum where at one end there's a highly disciplined, highly trained, highly organized, highly effective organization with a high state of discipline and on the other end of the spectrum is the organization that is lax, indisciplined and has a continuous strain of problems and issues associated with indiscipline. I'd like you to consider that your unit is somewhere along that spectrum of discipline. Ask yourself this question, where is it? I think there's no such thing as a perfect unit, but I think we should all strive to be there. We all need to strive to move our units towards a, the organization that is the most efficient and effective as possible that doesn't deal with issues of indiscipline. Dealing with sexual harassment, which eventually moves down that spectrum to sexual assaults, is every soldier's responsibility. I expect leaders not to walk away from or walk past issues of sexual harassment or sexual assault any more so than I'd expect the leader to walk past a piece PMCS that's not properly done. We'd never tolerate that. I'd never expect an NCO to walk past an, a soldier that wasn't wearing his eye pro properly or wearing his gloves properly. We would never tolerate that. And just as well, we shouldn't tolerate the sort of indiscipline associated with innuendos, improper jokes, slapping, touching because it's that indiscipline that moves us down the spectrum 
and eventually ends up in the investigation that gets our soldiers and our leaders into trouble. And let me tell you, every time we do one of those investigations, we find out that it didn't just happen overnight, that that discipline eroded over a period of time, and the leaders who tolerate that are the ones who are held accountable for those events that occur in their office. As the Assistant Adjutant General and the Commander of the Ohio Army National Guard, the Army National Guard is my unit. And I want you to know that I will not tolerate that sort of indiscipline in my unit. I expect every leader to enforce that same level of standard. Every soldier deserves to come to a place of dignity and respect and to serve there. And that's my expectation for each and every one of you. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he's just trying to soften the Army. You know, back in the day, we were allowed to do this, and we were a much better organization forward. Well, what I'm telling you is what our citizens and what our population expect of us. They expect us to be lethal at the point of contact, every soldier to master their craft, and they expect us to treat their sons and daughters with dignity and respect. Not objectifying them, not putting our hands on them, and certainly not sexually assaulting them. We will never be the efficient, effective organization we need to be. We will never reach our max level of lethality as long as we have that friction in our ranks. So let's get after eliminating it.